Hey, this is Tyler with TJX Survival Survival Dispatch. I've been out here filming with my friend Dave for a few days and we're going to talk about a knife, so stick with me. So, I was trying to think of a good way, and I just sprung this on him, he doesn't even know what we're doing. I was trying to think of a good way to review a knife, and I personally think the best way to review a knife is to review the characteristics and attributes of the knife, meaning what's it's used for, why did you make it like that. Okay. So what I usually do when I get the question, what's the best knife, is I ask, what are you using it for? The best knife for filleting is a fillet knife. The best knife for chopping a tree down is a hatchet. And the, the best survival knife, in my, my, my opinion, not that it really matters, is one that does all of the tasks in your environment in survival that makes sense. For me here, that would mean something that can clean fish, make traps, make friction fires. Because the majority of the tasks, in my mind, are those things. Yeah. Having said that, people want to hear your opinion and not mine. Okay, well, uh, my wife and my son think that it's not a very practical knife because it's got that flip up and it's it, you know they say it feels okay I, I've had a lot of critiquers but I designed this specifically so that it didn't have a straight uh, Mora Scandinavian grind looking knife because I like the flip up because it looks good to me it reminds me of Cochise or Geronimo having their little boot knife and uh, knives a long time ago used to be romantic looking not just uh, stories about them and, and I was seeing a lot of knives on the market that that don't don't have that feeling to me so I have this this uh, part of me that can make any knife I have functional and work great because of my skills not because of the knife but I think everybody should have at least 50 or more and there's no such thing as one knife that'll do it all but I tried to design a knife that would do a few things that are different than others maybe or at least if not different as well but one thing I discovered in the archaeological record was a particular kind of stone knife called the uh, I called it the sand dune cave knife because it was discovered in a cave on the Arizona border <laughs> with uh, Utah but some natives several thousand years ago used to drill their holes in the middle of their cottonwood uh, root handles that had stone blades in it in the middle and we couldn't figure out why but one day I figured it out because I was just using it and when I put my hand down the knife came right into the palm of my hand because of the dynamic of where that center hole is but I also told the people that were going to produce this knife Norm Shank and his really wonderful crew that I wanted lots of holes in that knife so that I could use it to tie it off to lots of things. I also wanted a little bit of metal sticking out at the end so I could use it, billet it without harming the knife or breaking the handle off, but also have it slightly sharp on the sides so I could use it to flesh out hides with or use it as a scraper for working, for, for uh, planing wood and stuff and arrow shafts. Uh, I wanted to have a strong enough handle with a taper in the center hole that you could use it as a fire socket. If you turn the blade away from you, put your spindle in there, that you could use it as a socket for making a bow drill fire. And so that happened. I wanted to have some little, little divots right in there so I could choke up on the blade with my thumb and middle finger, put my forefinger right out there and have lots of control while making jerky or doing fine cuts when caping out a hide. But also have it so that I could drill holes with that part and also use that part really fine when I'm trying to get, let's say, the eyelids and the nose off of a, of a, of a coyote uh, skin off, off, of its, off of its meat and you know just do some fine cutting. Also, I wanted the back of the blade to be domed so when you're billing, billeting or taking a big wooden club and banging the back of the blade, it doesn't mess the club up so much. It doesn't chew your, your, uh, your other tool up and it would be able to push that blade through big pieces of wood when you're doing big work. And then be small enough that whether I was choking up and doing fine work 
or doing you know some some hard cutting and some pulling cutting that I didn't have this big long blade and being able to tie that off as a spear uh, is handy or at least a tool that's way out away from me because you want to gig something or just protect yourself that's what all those holes do and then this little lip right here I didn't want it so big that it got in the way but I want it big enough that no matter how greasy or bloody my hand got while butchering that I didn't slide forward and a lot of my favorite Mora type knives or Scandinavian grind knives you can just slide right onto the blade when your hands get greasy in the middle of the night uh, I'm not always out hunting or butchering but the few times I have done that uh, I, I would like about a, a 14 inch bladed Bowie knife for that because you don't have to get your hand down in the carcass so this wouldn't be my first choice for some jobs but as an all-around knife I think it's worth having and uh, nobody should have just one and no one knife will do it all. Anybody who tells you this is the ultimate survival knife is selling knives. And in my experience, those people who know the least about using knives talk that way the most. The people who actually know how to use a knife know that you should have a machete, your carving knife, your butchering knife, and if you're not carrying it all because you have a, a llama or a camel or a horse, bring it on axes in the whole nine yards but if you were just gonna have one knife around here that was a basic survival knife this will do just fine uh, it's got a really strong handle out of my carta and I asked Norm to please make it a little thinner than others because I don't like big bulky things and because I'm always carrying lots of knives this might be the one that I don't carry around my neck But if I was gonna carry it on the side, it's got the ability to do so. It's got a place to put your belt through, but it's also got a place to tie it down so when you're running through the brush, it doesn't get flappy and caught on everything. So you can tie it down here and there, so there's grommets there, super sturdy uh, sheath. It's the kind of sheath you could fall on and not have it come through and hurt you. You could, you know, if you're wearing it like this, I recommend not driving a car because it might shove through everything through the steering wheel when you hit and in an accident so I wear it like this when I'm sitting out someplace working but I don't run through the brush with it around my neck most of the time I do that at camp but one of my favorite places to keep a knife is right there where it doesn't show and doesn't hit anything and this is a perfect sheath for that uh, if I want, if I if I was in a fighting situation where I knew I was going to use my knife for combat, I'd probably get the uh, Marine Corps K bar. Uh, but if I just had, I, I would hate to be stuck with a Marine Corps K bar. If I'll, if I was crafting and creating all my own gear, like my arrows and my bow and all my all my Stone Age supposedly or close to Stone Age looking gear, my my Metal Age. Robin Hood era gear uh, or my my you know native stuff from when it, people first got steel I don't think I want a, uh, a big blade I want a smaller blade that does a lot of things like from skinning to chopping vegetables chopping roots to carving and so the all around and, and, and being able to use it as many tools and scraping hides and doing stuff like that so I think that's one of the things I like about that last, that, that curve, is that if I dull that out a little bit, I can hide scrape, I can do very good hand hide scraping on a deer hide, uh, a bigger hide than that even. So that part of the blade right there facilitates a lot of different jobs that a flat blade won't do. So it gives me this big curve, kind of like a ulu. So, uh, Rather than just make up reasons for why this knife is cool, uh, the best thing I could say is I think you should get one and try it out and maybe send in your positive and negative uh, feelings about it 
or drop it in the comments here yeah and then uh and then that'll give us some some ideas about how to create the next really great usable functional intelligently designed knife like this one that's my symbol right there that i kind of borrowed from uh from Puebloan culture or from the Anasazi or the you know Hesatsunam the pre pre uh the southwesterners that were here before the Hopis and all that or the, their their ancestors that's a a bighorn sheep but if you flip it over it's a it's a helping hand and so that's my that's my logo and for those of you who like uh you know autographed survival expert oh by the way an expert is a spurt under pressure x and it's past a past spurt under pressure is x spurt but a specialist who, like me uh that's my name david holiday on the knife and if, if if that's beneficial to your sense of of ownership i give you my uh, my recommendation to buy this from shank knives oh by the way one other thing talk is talk but Norm Shank really does use the best steel you can get for the money nowadays. And his knives last really well. And so do the other knife company makers in his same town that are all buddies of his. So uh, look them up. Thanks. Okay. I thought I was going to add something to that, but I don't think that there's anything I can even think of. I bet you, you could think of thousands of things. I, I Maybe like two. So... There's a lot of things that you see that repeat in knives. A lot of my experience comes from hundreds of knives that I've demoed with Blade HQ, which was good and bad. The good part is really that I got to try this and figure out why I liked this attribute or whatever, and then try that one, and then try that one. And every time we went out, I, I'd make a trap out of it, or a kid, or skin a fish, or something. And there's some things that are consistently repeating okay and there's stuff that you see again and again online that people want um, as an example a lot of people want a 90 degree spine but you've got it right here and the only reason they're using that is for a fire rod yeah so yeah, which I don't ever use so yeah so there's not a negative there hey, I didn't know but it works great <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know stuff like that um, I was I wasn't sure if you knew that I I should know that you know this but I wasn't sure if you knew that that worked as a great spindle and I was gonna say oh that works as a great spindle then you mentioned it. I was like of course he knows that already it's but, that it's that hole it's the best one those two are for yeah but you could put it in, yeah. in either hole it's gonna balance yes, the best in the yes, center one yeah um, I like to put it like that so the blades away from me but I mean yeah, whatever that's works what well that's what you're supposed to do <clears throat> And a lot of time when you do have a 90 degree spine and you're pushing your thumb on the back of it, I don't know how many times I've cut my thumb. Oh yeah. Two nice little slits. This won't do that, which is good. Uh, uh, commenting on that, a lot of mm -hmm. people don't use a knife all day long. And so they think it's cool because they're just kind of using it once in a while. You cut when, your you hand open. It, when you have it in your hand for hours of hard work, you, make you can tell whether the handle's worth having or not. The first time yeah. I blistered <clears> my hand, is when I turned a two before into a sword at like yeah. <laughs> eight years old or something. Right. I carved it until my hand blistered, and then I carved it until my other hand blistered, and then I was mad because I couldn't swing my sword. You got anyway. Over, you got over it well. <laughs> anyway. You got over it really well. I do agree that there's no such thing as an ultimate survival knife, but if you're looking for one that will do everything you need, this is probably it. I think that's a fair assessment. That's a fair statement. That, so yeah. I'll make sure that the shank link for this knife is down below. Give us positive, negative, whatever you want. Drop the comments below. Norm said that if you use my name when you call in, that I get some money out of the deal. Do that. I would love that. My wife would really love that. That would be outstanding. I think I get like $50 maybe per knife if Something. you use my name. Uh, and Norm will have to correct that if that's not correct. But I'm pretty sure that was the original agreement. I get some money if you say I'm calling in using David Holiday as my code secret contact. More importantly, you'll get a quality knife. Is that more important? Oh, I, it more is, important. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Hopefully this was valuable to you. And thanks for watching. Thank you. You giving this to me? Yeah, there you go. No. You know a guy that makes them. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I want there you one. Go. I want one.